overseas and how do we expand it okay to be a big material expanded polystyrene and from here go through our special patented technology to treat it and with this technology allows you to mix it with cement when you blend it very well it will blend well without any segregation okay so this is how our product comes in one bag okay over here is our colleague today we will bring you to visit our production factory so the first thing first we have to start with the first step from the resin import from overseas taiwan okay and in order to make it expand to this size which is 50 times of its original size we need to have a boiler system so boiler system produce the steam okay and with air compressor and with this as a precursor by using a machinery we are able to expand the bits from this into a big size okay so this is how we do it You can see over here the material will rest after it's been expanded okay you will then go through a second expansion procedure according to our method statement just like how you cook okay a fried rice you have to cook the rice twice same principle we do it here okay this allows us to bring down the cost tremendously so what is our key technology of our company okay we produce the resin everything from the raw resin to this size okay everything we do it in-house allow us to save tremendous costing okay we are the lowest price lightweight concrete lightweight aggregate supplier in both Malaysia and Singapore so once the resin is expanded into expanded polystyrene ETS it will be stored in the silo over here okay and when it's reached its maturity as you can see it's very big in size okay then we will then process it to change it into light term as you can see it has a signature blue color okay so this is how we do it Here is ready, okay? What we do is that we transfer it over into our machinery system, and from here, it will go through a very special chemical treatment procedure, okay? So as you can see over here, with this facility, we are able to produce everything just in time, okay? We don't need to have a huge space to keep stock, and we are able to do as and when you have a project. One day, we are able to produce up to 500 meter cube based on 18 working hour shift. So this is a very high capacity that we are able to cater for many large scale projects. So what we do here is we, we don't just manufacture the product. We also sell the manufacturing technology to overseas. We sell to countries like UK, China, Korea, Philippines, and the next is Australia. So this is how we bag one bag of it. So one bag of this is 500 liters. Okay, as you can see over here, this is how we bag the aggregate. Okay, so just put it on. Okay, so that's about the production process of uh, making our material. Right now, I will, I will go straight into another video, which is how do we actually use it on site.
currently we had already went through the factory introduction and a simple marketing video. The next two minutes video I will show is how do we use the material on site. Okay, as you can see, the manufacturing procedure is very simple. You just have to add the bit and blend everything together. Within 5 minutes, it can be used as side. Okay, so I will do a bit of uh, introduction here. Okay. Over here, as you can see, this is one of our uh, projects in NTU. So we partner with Wholesim and we send the material down as a ready mix. Okay. You can pump it on site even using a concrete pump. And this is the beauty of our product. You can see that the bits blend very well with the cement uh, uh, without any segregation. Pump up to side, five level. Okay. Okay. So as you can see over here, the texture of the material is very well blended. Okay, so Rafi, that's a brief introduction about our uh, uh, short video about our product and I will go into the presentation slide right now. Okay, we start off the presentation with the uh, introduction of the material and our company. A bit briefing about our company. Um, Waterproof actually started in 2013. Uh, Wang, I think you need yeah. to zoom in a bit. Uh, zoom in a bit more. more. Yes. Okay, okay, sure. We actually started in year 2013 uh, as a trading company and very quickly we actually starting to sell waterproofing into manufacturing the lightweight aggregates. Uh, firstly in Singapore in 2014, then after that we, within two years we shifted back to JB in order to reduce the production cost and we started the EPS expanded polystyrene manufacturing as well. In 2016, we actually set up a second factory to pro produce ALC panel and over time we expand our factory over a two acre land. Uh, as of uh, 2018, we have more than 230 projects for light term in uh, many countries and we also have a manufacturing partner in Korea, China, Philippines, UK and uh, uh, as of this month is uh, Australia as well. So franchise system is whereby they actually purchase our machinery and set up over there. We also have a, a small branch in Sarawak producing AAC blocks and we also have a branch in UK, Northern Ireland, uh, producing the light term lightweight aggregates. Okay, so uh, all this is uh, in our, um, all this material is actually in our brochure today that we will send out later after the presentation. As I want to focus more on the product, I will skip some part of this. Our organization structure is quite simple. Um, firstly, is, uh, we have the sales uh, department, then we have our HR and account department. We also have a production team and planning team. We have our in-house lorry as well, our own logistic team. We have our procurement team. Okay, and we also have a Sarawak team to take care of the branch. Our core value of our company is uh, uh, quite straightforward. We want to sell innovative product that is low in price, that can cater for the needs of the industry. And we uh, make sure we carry it out with honesty. Firstly, with our investor in mind, followed by our supplier, then our customer and last and also our employee. Um, we want to serve the society and industry and hopefully driven by passion.
Okay. Okay. So uh, just now we have shared the production uh, machinery. So this is how we actually do it in Northern Ireland as well. As you can see, we it's very easy for us to set up a manufacturing plant. So this is like a franchise system whereby we sell the machinery to our partner and they set up overseas. Okay. And this is what um our partners is doing in uh, uh Northern Ireland. Okay. They use it as a floor insulation strip. We will talk about this later. Uh, as you can see, this is the underheating floor system. So our material help them to save the energy of the um, heating system. Okay, we also have a, a franchise partner in uh, China. As you can see, this is some projects that is being done in uh, Beijing. Okay, and this is a very interesting application of light term that we will share later on as well. Okay, using as an infill material for light gauge system. But what is so special about this system is that, as you can see, can you mute? Them? Yeah, as you can see, uh, the flooring uh, is. Um, is a structural flooring and infill by light term. We will talk about this in a while. So we also set up in Korea as well. This is some pictures of how we do the setting up. Okay. As you can see the facility, this is the facility. And we also have set up a factory in uh, Philippines as well by our franchise partner. Okay. And these are some examples of how we are packing the material. Okay. So before we go into the topic, I also want to share the terms that we will use. Okay, light term lightweight concrete is the final end result of the product. Okay, and light term aggregate uh, is the word used to describe the raw material itself. And when we pre-pack it, uh, as you can see over here, when we pre-pack it with sand and cement readily, we call it as light term dry mix. So there is total of three terms that we'll be using okay, uh, later on. Okay, and in this brochure also, I will put in a lot of frequently asked questions. Uh, I will not go through in detail right now so that uh, we will be able to finish uh, on time. Uh, okay, and just to give a visualization, uh, light term dry mix is when we pack the material with cement or sand and then we send down to site. Okay, so it's like Milo or three in one pre pack you bring to site and then you just add water and you can use it on the spot. Okay, and by Pour everything in into a mixer. Okay, open one bag, pour it in. Okay, and then you can directly add water. Okay, just mix for five minutes. Okay, and then you can pour it out as a lightweight concrete. Then you can apply it onto the floor. Okay, very easy to use. Okay, and just have to spread over on the floor. Okay, so some question that we will ask is uh, if you apply on the floor, do you need to apply bonding agent? The answer is most projects don't need unless there is some concern or hollowness. Okay, and should we actually put in BRC on the lightweight material? The answer is no need unless it's a special case application. And there is also no need to use expansion joint at the lightweight concrete itself. Okay, unless uh, for the topping screen layer, if it's external area, then yes, we will need to use it. Okay, the key feature of our product, the key feature of our product is lightweight and it has very good thermal insulation performance. These are the two main key features of our product. Okay. And um, the, the, main, the main performance of our material is it has a um, certificate of conformity issue by the laboratory and it's also listed in Singapore product listing scheme. We also passed the EN13501 classification. Okay. So what is the core thing about our product is that normal lightweight aggregates, there is a problem uh, if you float up. Okay, but with our material, we guarantee that it will blend very well and there will be no floating up issue. Okay, and it comes in two variations, light term and light term mini. There is two variation of the material. Okay, the density wise of the material, this is very important. I will spend a bit more time. Okay, you can batch our material according to all kinds of uh, density. Okay. Started from 250 kg per meter cube down to 1008. Okay, the higher you go to the scale, the compressive strength will be higher. Normal concrete, you have to put in aggregates, but by using our material, you can replace the aggregate and sand with our material. So, as you can see over here, it's just cement as a paste to stick everything together. Okay, so light term plays the role like a void filler. Okay, it plays the role as an air pocket, as an air and training agent, something like this. Okay, and water density is 1000. So assuming you batch it according to like 250 kg per meter cube, it will float on water. Okay, so over here, we prepare everything quite nicely for, for your usage. Okay, um, 
different density as you can see over here and the mixed design of it, the strength to achieve, okay, and the cement sand and light term formulation. And we can customize the formulation upon your request. So the first thing to do is, for example, you want to make a precast element is to decide what is your compressive strength requirement, then to decide what density you want to achieve. And then let's say you want to achieve three megapascal, then you see whether 1000 kg per meter cube can achieve your requirement. If the answer is yes, then you just batch this accordingly. Okay, so this is for, 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 for this portion of the brochure. And this is some general technical data of our product. Um, the density of 250, what is the strength requirement? What is the strength that we can achieve? Compressive strength, able to achieve 0 0.83 Newton per mm square, which is approximately one megapascal. Okay, but as per discussed just now, you can adjust it according to your requirement. Not a problem that we are able to adjust the formula. Okay. So the material can be mixed on site, like what we shown just now, using a small mixer, or you can buy a big mixer from us to mix one meter cube, or you can partner with the ready mix company to be sent out in the ready mix format. Okay. All kinds of area to be used for our material. Okay, this is a whole overview and we will go through one by one, uh, but we will go through in four big categories of areas of application. Okay, the first one is the most commonly used in Singapore. Okay, it's what we call as a lightweight topping of 250 kg per meter cube. Okay, usually it's for A and A projects. Okay, addition and alteration works whereby you have a floor level that you have to match bring up the floor level from a low level to a high level to match an existing building. Okay, so for example, this is an NTU project that we have done. Okay, we use it as a 150 mm thick floor topping. Very commonly used in Singapore for such context. Similar application is lift upgrading program. Okay, to match the floor level of the uh, lift shaft, then we they actually top up the HDB corridor. Same goes to internal HDB unit. Okay, and some other projects is uh, some government projects, Ministry of Social and Family Development, used on corridor as a floor topping as well. This is a Woha uh, architect project. Okay, and similar application, you can use it on bond deck as well. It's definitely possible. We had did one job in Nassim Road. Okay, and last year we did one really big project. Okay, it's done by Samsung Construction Architect CPG, volume 3000 meter cube. Okay. And this is during the conceptual stage, light term was specified by the architect, CPG architect to be used as a lightweight topping. So this is the whole project size. As you can see, it's a very high commercial building. Okay, so where do we use it? Okay, this is the plan view of the project. Okay, as you can see, this is planted area that requires topping up uh, so that they can match a certain floor level for each individual floor. And these are the detail of it. Okay, as you can see, it's a bond deck design. Okay, and on the bottom you have a structural concrete and they want to bring up the floor level, okay, to match an existing structure. So let's say this is the finished floor level and there is a deficit level that requires topping up. So they top up with our material followed by a protection script to receive the floor finishing. Then finally is the floor finishes. Okay, this is a general build up that we use for most of the area and we have completed the job uh, last year. Yeah. So material sent down as a dry mix, dry mix format, okay, and then they apply as a screening on site. Okay, so um, similar application, this is what we call as a system leveling, okay, whereby this is a very swampy soil uh, that even doing tiling uh, is in Mayor Road near to ECP East Coast Park, okay, even by doing proper tiling, the engineer is predicting that there will still be settlement on that area. So what happened is that they remove the amount of soil that is equivalent to the building weight, okay, and they top it up, fill up backfill with light term, which is very light, lighter than water. So they use this uh, as what we call as a load compensation method. Okay, so this is a load compensation method. Okay, how do they do it is really simple. Okay, firstly, first is they excavate the amount of soil that is equivalent to the building load up to 800 mm, okay, and then they put in a polyethylene sheet, then they backfill with light term as a lightweight ready mix, and then they only cast the concrete slab, okay, and upon curing of the lightweight material and the concrete slab, okay, you can see this is full ground, and upon completion, let's look at the build-up, it's soil followed by light term, then followed by the RC slab, 
then followed by the structure. So the idea is that the soil being excavated is equivalent to the weight of the dead load of the building. So at the lower particular point of a soil particle, it doesn't feel additional stress after you complete the structure. That's the concept behind. Similar concept can be used for geotechnical works, okay, as a backfill material. Okay, these are some examples of application. Okay, all this is in the blow share as well. I will not go in too much detail. Okay, we also partner with a uh, ready mix company. Okay, and this is one job we partner with Angro under top mix. Okay, whereby we batch the material readily and we sell to the customer as a lightweight concrete. So where do we use it is that they have a vehicular ramp that they have to bring up the floor level up to I think about one meter. Okay, so this is done in 2015. So they, as you can see, we pump close to about 800 meter cube of material onto a vehicular ramp. Okay, and this is during pumping. We make a form work, then we cast it. Okay, then after that, in order for the lorry to travel on it, okay, they top it up with a layer of concrete. I think it's about 200 mm thick, reinforced with two layer of BRC. And this is upon completion and the lorry design loading 24 kilonewton per meter square, not a problem at all. Okay, assuming it's 0 0.86 MPA converts to 0 0.86 newton per mm square, convert is about 860 kilonewton per meter square. Definitely not a problem to be used, okay, as a backfilling material. Second application is, okay, our material is commonly used as a roof insulation as well, as we know, in uh, roofing, okay, it requires to meet the BCA requirement for U value. So the maximum limit is 1.2, by using our material, okay, we can actually achieve the U value requirement for the roofing system. Okay, in short, uh, in uh, in a summary, waterproofing first, insulation layer, and then you need a screening to cover up the insulation layer. Okay, so these are a standard build up. Let's look at some example. Okay, conventionally, uh, this is to further elaborate. Conventionally, is to do waterproofing and then to put a blue color polyform board followed by jaw textile and followed by concrete topping. But there is a problem is because it's very difficult to cast a 2% gradient due to the roof span. Uh, and if you really do a 2% gradient, your topping speed will be very heavy. Okay, so there is a few ways you can solve this problem. Number one is you can apply our lightweight material as a screed and as a thermal screed at a good 2% gradient. Okay, and because it's very lightweight, it will not cause additional loading, followed by a touch on the waterproofing membrane. This is one way you can do it. Another way is that you can replace the regular extruded polystyrene board just by replacing this particular layer. And the benefit is you will have less joint in the insulation layer. Okay, there is also another way to do it is that um, some builders, they prefer to do what we call as a one cast system. So they want to have a screen that is also a thermal screen. Yes, we can do it as well. So number one, after waterproofing, you then apply our special formulator screed at a density of 1000, okay? And you can achieve the U value. And we do what we call as a wet on wet. Before it cures, uh, they will faster screed a layer of mortar over it, okay? Three in one mortar with a thickness of about 10 mm, okay? So this, you can do a proper floor and you have, have less joint on the screening layer. Okay, so these are some examples of project we have done before on the roof. Okay, and this is another popular project. Next, the Rangoon Mall is uh, the shopping mall. Okay, so firstly, they waterproof using a PU waterproofing, water ponding test. Then they will do an expansion joint because it's an exposed area, followed by our material lightweight screen. Then wait for it to dry, travel it, then they will top it up with a pre-packed script. This is the final finishing, okay? And it is exposed to weathering. Okay, we also do some other projects. Uh, this is partnered with WMP, okay? Batch as a lightweight ready mix concrete. And this is Toyota Service Center, used on the roof as well, PU waterproofing, okay? Apply the screening. Okay, the interesting part uh, is then, upon curing, uh, okay, we, we cast a layer of in-situ chipping concrete, then it is trafficable to park the Toyota car. Okay, this is an interesting project as well. This is 
a famous project, Pengarang uh, Oil and Gas Project in Johor. Okay, and we partner with Lafa Shosim. Okay, firstly, we batch the lightweight concrete and we pump onto the structure. We use it, as you can see, as a lightweight thermal strip with a proper 2% form. Okay, and upon curing, we then apply a layer of torch on membrane over it as an exposed waterproofing system. Okay, so as you can see, there's many ways to design the roofing system. So it's it really depends on the project and the consultant intention. Okay. Some special project, this is a project called Wang's Hotel, is in Ottram Road. Okay, they use our material as a acoustic screed uh, to reduce impact sound on a bar because there's problem on the unit below. They are complaining that when some ladies wearing high heels, uh, the knocking sound, impact sound is disturbing the guests below. Okay, this is a really niche application. And this is a very commonly used application. Okay, our material used as an anti-condensation layer okay, uh, for server rooms to prevent moisture condensation problem due to uh, low temperature on the surface of the wall and causes dew point problem. Okay, so how they do it is that we top up as a thickness of 200 mm. Similar application is used uh, in one project, Paradigm Mall. Okay, this is a very big shopping mall in Johor Bahru and they have an ice skating ring. Okay, so we are proud to say that the ice skating ring is cast, uh, the parameter is cast using our thermal strip okay, to prevent condensation problem because down there of the, down the lower part of this uh, skating ring is a layer of ice and they are worried it will cause condensation to the, to the, to the perimeter wall. Okay, so they actually use us our material. Okay, similar example or application is used by our courier partner. Okay, this is their brochure. And let's have a look how they do it there. In courier example, the flooring requires heating and they don't want to allow the heat, okay, of the insulation to be of, of the heating flooring to be transferred to the unit below. So they have to insulate the heating element, okay, so that energy can be saved. Okay, so what they do is that they apply our thermal strip on the floor, okay, so that the heat can be retained. Okay, there is also another problem if you are if they are using regular extruded polystyrene board that will have cracks on the flooring system itself due to the top expansion board, extruded board, they have a little bit of movement over time okay and this is similar example is used in uk as well england okay whereby they pump it okay this is underfloor heating as you can see then they pump our material onto the underfloor heating system okay the third example application is light term can be used incorporate into precast element okay this is some example of how we do it with some architectural panel. This is a project done by HCFA Architect and how we do it in a MOS project in Malaysia. Okay. And it can be used to cast into all kinds of odd shapes precast. This is done in Philippines. Okay. This is how we do it. Make a mold, number one. Then you cast it in with sand and cement. Make sure to apply a good more oil. Upon demolding, you have a very nice panel. Then, can it over and do a proper waterproofing. And then let it dry. Subsequently, mechanically fix it on a steel frame. Okay, then using a proper hooking system. Okay, clad it onto the external wall as a facade system. So what are the benefits is that when we incorporate light term, it reduces the weight of the precast and subsequently reduce the cost of your um, reinforcing requirement okay, to provide the robustness and the strength. Okay. The material using similar principle, okay, we also supply for some PBU project, achieving all kinds of compressive strength, as you can see over here. All this is in the brochure as well. This is 
a mock-up we done for our one of done by one of our clients. Okay. And we also did a mock-up before for a PVVC unit. Okay, this is actually an MTU project. Used as a filler for the flooring system. Okay. And these are some other examples of precast that can be done. This is a gable end wall. This is done in Malaysia, in Malacca. Okay, using our material with a proper strengthening rebar, we can cast a precast element. Okay, this is how it can be done. This is done in China, done by our partner. This is a light gauge steel system, and they cast a really lightweight precast element and they hoist it up, okay, as a precast cable and wall. This is also done in China. Personally, I find this a bit laborious, okay. So they put in a formwork, then they cast our material. As you can see, it blends very well, okay. And upon curing, this is the final result. Okay. Some projects, they also use our material as a drywall infill. So this is a cement board system. And then they pump it in to the cement board. But it is still considered a wet works. So this is not too commonly used in Singapore. We also did some project whereby they incorporated our material into the light gauge steel system. This is really interesting. Okay, so how we do it is that number one, we install the light gauge steel system first. Okay, it's prefabricated. Then they put on the MGO board or they put on the cement board. Then they infill with light term to provide the acoustic value and good thermal performance. Okay, so this is how we do it. As you can see, it's totally infilled with the lightweight material. And this is upon completion. This is actually done on the roof of an industrial building. It's in a Tampanese area. Okay, some other application of our material. We also use it for structural application, but only some special cases. Okay, it's pre-batched at a density of 1009, achieving a minimum concrete strength of grade 35. This is a temple project in Singapore. This is upon casting. The weight reduction is not a lot. Normal concrete density is 2004 kg per meter cube. Okay, but by using our material, it can reduce down to 1009. Okay, so I just want to sidetrack a bit and show a simple video. Okay, if the material is well mixed, uh, it can achieve a very high flowability. And this is an example of how our customer do it in UK and in Korea. So as you can see here, the slum of the material can be adjusted to be very high, but do you realize that the bits, they are not floating. It can blend very, very well. Okay, by doing a proper self-leveling method, it is possible to save on the topping street application. Okay, and the strength we can achieve for some special make design is up to average out of grade 35. Okay, this is very interesting as well, um, done in China by our, our partner. As you can see, the structural floor is being cast using a light gauge system and they infill into the floor void using our material, okay? And this is a real 
on-site application, on-site visit that I personally visit. As you can see, it's a light gauge flooring system and infill with light term. Okay, I would like to show a very short video on this because I think it's very interesting. Okay, this is a light gauge structural system. Okay, and this is a structural floor. Fully cast just by using light term. Okay, this is how it looks like. And in Singapore itself, we have such reference to this is uh, one of the terrace house. By using a light gauge system and using a corrugated sheet, okay, they actually even fill the corrugated sheet with light term. This is a picture taken from below. So you have a light gauge system as a truss followed by a corrugated sheet. And then it is infill with light term followed by a thin layer of protection strip. Some other applications is to cast into lightweight bricks, okay, and to use as a on wall, spray on on wall. This is how we do it as a spray on material on wall. Okay, it will be able to stick well on the wall. And we also do some special formulation for our UK partner at the density of just 5% of normal concrete. This is only 110 kg per meter cube, extremely light in weight. Okay, and we also cast light term into precast ALC panel. These are some panels that we have made using light term, and these are some panels that we have made using air and training agent. Okay, this is our own lorry, and this is how we pack the panel and send down to site. Okay, we also did some special project whereby we incorporate carbon fibers into the EPS resin. As you can see, it's a bit gray in color. So what is the benefit is that it can really increase the thermal value of the precast unit. I also attached a easy chart so that you can know which kind of density that you can, you can you need based on what is your usage of application. I will not go in detail on this. The slide will be given later. Okay, we have all the reports done, certificate of conformity, everything. And as you can see over here, uh, we also have like compressive strength report and uh, toxicity test, flame spread, smoke production, um, flaming droplets, all the fire code requirement we have passed the test. As you can see over here, okay, the bits uh, is like a honeycomb. It doesn't stick to each other. So if you pass the non-combustible fire test, okay, tested according to BS standard, non-combustibility test, non-combustibility test, the material is proven to be non-combustible. Okay, we also did some toxicity tests. And as you can see over here, all the figures okay, are within the required range. Finally, I would like to share SCDF requirement. Okay, the fire code. The, this is the latest circular. To use the material as an embedded plastic material, as long as you have a concrete cover, no further fire test required. Okay, so we pass all the code requirement. And if you are using on the roof as a roof covering, as long as it's a non-combustible material, it can be used. Okay, but if some customer they are still worried, okay, these are for cases it is used as a final floor finishing. Uh, okay, I will not go into detail, but we still pass all the code requirement. Okay, so if you need any more information, feel free to contact us. We are able to provide all this. We did a lot of project reference uh, for the past uh, seven years, more than 300 jobs. Okay, um, I will highlight a few key projects. Um, this is a actually enabled job done by Sunray. Also, we did a CDL job and uh, consultant engineer is uh, ISW consultant. We also did people association project. We also did two projects by Boha Architect, Formworks Architect, and also Hwasia construction, SH design and build jobs, Samsung construction jobs. Okay, 
So these are our reference. Okay, so the final part of the presentation, costing comparison. Okay, as you can see over here, today we would like to share some really great breakthroughs of our company because of um, the recent development during the uh, COVID period, we managed to reduce the price of our material tremendously. Okay, to put things into perspective, okay, demand price is 96 Singapore dollar per ton, Send price is around 26 Singapore dollar. Aggregate price is now 20 Singapore dollar, which is around uh, 52 Singapore dollar per meter cube. So, vermiculite perlite, okay, has a problem. They are our competitors' products, okay, equivalent product. It has been selling at around 500 Singapore dollar per meter cube. Okay, so what happened when we started the business in 2013? We sell at 450, and over time, when we start the production, we reduce the price tremendously down to 350. Okay. And for the past three years, we are selling at around 200 plus dollar. So we are the lowest price, okay, lightweight concrete supplier in the market. Okay, as we know that concrete price is around 95 to 110, to put things into perspective, okay, pre-packed mortar floor street is around, okay, 130 Singapore dollar per meter cube. And extruded board, uh, the blue color polystyrene board is around 136 dollar per meter cube. You can compare the price. These are some price that we get from uh, the, the market. Okay, so... During the MCO period, we actually so-called managed to reduce the cost tremendously uh, through our R&D and partly also due to the drop in oil and gas pet petrol-based material costing. So, a good news to inform, okay, even if in the future that the price of oil um, uh, increase again, we are definitely still be able to retain the price at the new revised price uh, of 125 to 135 Singapore dollar per meter cube okay so i believe this is a really good news because by revising our pricing to this range allow us to be extremely extremely competitive compared to other equivalents product in the market okay so hopefully as today we have some participants is from the ready make and uh, uh, prepack industry okay um Feel free to contact us because it is very, very likely, okay, that we are able to sell you the raw aggregate, not the dry mix, okay, and you prepack it as a dry mix, okay, and still sell at this pricing, yet still retain a good margin. We are very competitive, not at, as low as the same price, but we are almost there. The, the aggregate price is almost close to the same price, okay? So, uh, 2.46, I think uh, we are still quite on time. Okay, so I will pass back to Martin to conduct the FAQ question. And thanks for your attention. Uh, Martin, we can't hear you. Ah, sorry. Okay, I forgot to switch on my mic. Okay. Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> okay, so firstly, uh, yeah, apologize. I think a slight glitch along the way. I think the connection problem. Uh, so the uh, audio and the video a bit lag, right? And uh, some of the slides may be a bit blur, but don't worry. We will be, uh, I think the first question uh, on the Q&A here is, yeah, don't worry. We will be sending you uh, all these materials, right? And then, uh, okay. So now we start the Q&A session and uh, maybe firstly, we will look at the questions that have been typed in. Uh, okay, first question uh, from Hanson. So can the lightweight aggregate resist um, uh, solvents like thinner or xylene? Uh, wait, uh, just to confirm. Uh, um, yeah. but it, um, uh, I, I checked with Paris, the line, the hmm. presentation just now was, seems to be quite clear. So okay. uh, they, yeah. It, it could be uh, my my site then maybe only my <laughs> yeah my so, connection okay yeah, yeah don't worry so yeah. I'm actually looking at the the, the group chat now mm. uh, I I I, okay. I saw the first question is uh, from Simon can share presentation slide and video so your question is does it start from there uh, yes correct two thirty right ah uh, yes correct okay okay yeah. so the next question is your lightweight concrete approved to be used as structural concrete ah. Is this where you are starting now? Uh, I think before that, okay, there's a question from uh, Hanson, a uh, private question. So he's oh, asking question, whether, okay, yeah, yeah. whether a light, our lightweight aggregate can resist uh, solvents like thinner or xylene. 
Okay, uh, very good question. Super good question. Uh, for, for our lightweight material itself, uh, the aggregate, it, it is not able to, be, uh, it is sensitive to solvent. So uh, it will melt when it com comes in contact with solvent. But when you already so-called uh, mix it with concrete, right? It is like a honeycomb structure. And even though the solvent are able to get through the whole honeycomb structure, which is highly unlikely due to surface tension, uh, highly unlikely, but even if it does and it melts the polystyrene, it doesn't really matter because the strength of the lightweight concrete is 100% derived from the cementitious matrix. Okay, upon curing, okay, the strength doesn't come from the aggregate itself. So if you have like a back filling that normally they will use a polystyrene as a dual form, uh, th there's so many cases that there's oil spill and the road uh, start to sink down because the polystyrene board is being dissolved. But by using light term, you will not have this problem. Okay, the strength will still be the same. Right. Okay, so the uh, move on to the next question from ST Wang. Uh, asking whether our lightweight concrete uh, has been approved for structure to be used as structure concrete by BCA Singapore. Okay, uh, Mr. Wang, thanks for your question. The answer to this is uh, we, we do able to achieve the compressive strength, but modulus elasticity structural strength, we don't have a proper testing yet. So uh, the Euro code says that uh, for, for structural concrete using lightweight material, it has to be an aggregate. It must not be a, like air, air and training technology. So our material is a bit gray uh, in the building code. So um, we, would, we do not recommend to use it for structural yet at this point of time because uh, even ourselves as supplier, we are a bit concerned. Yes. So uh, only strictly for non-structural at this point in time. Okay, next question from uh, Mr. Peter Ling. So for the floor insulation with heating element, is there a layer of reinforcement to control the cracks? Yeah, Mr. And, Peter, uh, thanks for your... Shrinkage and expansion. Yeah. yeah, Mr. Peter, thanks for your question. Uh, for reinforcement, it is not required to be used in our material. Don't need to specify BRC in our layer. The usage of BRC will only worsen the situation because sometimes the workers step on the BRC and BRC doesn't bond well to a porous material. And when the when the BRC like uh, like 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 deflect, uh, it will so-called cause the lightweight material to debond from the slab. Okay, if your objective is to prevent crack, okay, you can put in the BRC at the topping script layer, but strictly do not put in our lightweight material layer, not necessary. Okay, and cracks usually will appear on uh, exposed wet weather area like on the roof. If it's an internal area, uh, usually not so much of a problem. That is based on our past experience. Lah. Yeah. Okay, then uh, from Mr. Eric, is uh, asking about the, why is the application of light term in PBU? Okay, uh, Mr. Eric, thanks for your question. We use light term in PBU because they want to reduce the weight of the PBU unit. Okay, so we partner with a uh, customer like Eastern Pretech. Okay, they submit to BCA for uh, the in principle approval is already being approved. Use light term to cast the PBU unit. Okay, uh, okay a question from uh, Papa Win. So for the purpose of backfilling to the voids of unused space in the underground structures, would the cost be economical compared to sand or other forms? LSS or concrete. Okay, uh, Ms. Papamit, uh, thanks for your question. Okay, for backfilling purpose, uh, yes, the, the liquid soil stabilizer we are looking at, if I'm not mistaken, it's around 90 Singapore dollar or, or 80, something like this. Okay, but there is a big problem is that, okay, the density, uh, if I'm not mistaken, is uh, 1,005, something like this. If I'm, if I'm not wrong, uh, okay, so that some cases, it might not really be uh, that, that helpful. Okay, and by using our material, you can adjust accordingly 250 kg per meter cube up to 1000 to match the water density. Okay, so, so, and currently our price, as you can see, from 400 plus reduced to 130, I think it's already a very, very good alternative to solve many of the uh, geotechnical problems. Yeah. All right, so next question uh, Do you have water absorption or penetration test report? Yeah, thanks for the question. Uh, for water absorption, uh, lightweight porous material is uh, uh, if you have a high water absorption rate. Yeah, so we never proceed with the test report. 
Okay, and uh, from Mr. Chai, uh, can this be used to build a soundproof room? Uh, hi, Mr. Chai. This one, this gen this question is a bit general. Maybe uh can be more specific. Uh, normally, are you referring to uh uh what what kind of uh sound sound parameters you are looking at? Are you looking at SDC uh or like impact sound? Uh, what kind of sound you are looking at? Yeah. Um, uh, if you are referring to SDC, uh, that one has to be tested under as a full system. So that one, uh, we can send you some data we have for our precast ALC panel. Yep. Okay, then uh, uh, from Mr. Peter, uh, did, whether asked about past project, uh, whether the QP has asked for seven days or 28 days uh, uh, curing or compressive strength test. Okay, seven days and 28 days for lightweight concrete. Let's say you are looking at grade two, three. Uh, uh, it's uh, very, almost the same. So normally we will suggest directly do a seven days is all that's sufficient. Okay, um, some QP will be convinced by our logical explanation that Okay, 0 0.86 Newton per mm square is 860 kN Newton per meter square. And the design loading, even like for driveway, uh, for, for lorries, uh, is 24. So 24 over 860 uh, is way beyond sufficient. But some cases, they are still concerned, so we will still do a cube test. Yes, it's quite common, maybe around uh, 10 jobs, 2 jobs, you do a cube test. How about curing? Okay, curing is that it's to be trafficable. We would suggest to wait 24 hours upon casting. Okay, but... Uh, if you really have to walk over it, you can put the wood plank and 12 hours, you want to walk over, put the wood plank, workers can walk over the wood plank. Yeah. Okay, then uh, Miss Cindy is asking if, uh, about the green label. Yeah, okay, because it's a raw material, so it's not the end product, so uh, we don't have a green label for it at, at this point of time. Okay, and then uh, Mr. Gerald, uh, this is the million dollar question. Uh, what's the function of VOD additive for your light term? Yeah, uh, Mr. Jared, this one is uh, really a uh, uh, never mind uh, half a million dollar question. I will send you our we will send you our bank account later. Then you can transfer the money to us first, <laughs> and we will give you a full answer on this. Uh, yeah, okay. Joking aside, the, the function is that it will um it, it plays the role as a uh to to ensure the bits will will blend very well without floating up. But the technical uh science science in it is uh, a bit confidential at this point. Yeah. Okay, so uh, really this is the key to our product and what makes it different from all the other similar products in the market, right? So, and uh, it's a proprietary uh, information, right? So next question, uh, Mr. Brian Chai uh, is asking, do you have any cost comparison between light term uh, and foam concrete? Hi, uh, Mr. Brian, this question is a bit general. Why? Uh, because um, if you want to really measure the pricing difference, uh, just now we have a mixed design, right? So you, firstly, you have to decide what mixed design you are particularly referring to first then only you can have a clear uh, answer to this question. Yeah, because the light term usage will affect the pricing. Lah. Yes. Uh, so, but in general, right, uh, the pricing is, based on my understanding, is um, foam concrete will still be lower, but foam concrete have so many problems in the market is people don't have the technology and know how to make it blend well. Okay. And, and foam concrete, if you use the wrong form, uh, it will affect the cement quality, the, the bubble will burst, all these kind of problems. It's very hard to... Uh, achieve a right compressive strength or segregation problem. So that's why you see nobody use foam concrete to, to on site nowadays. It's very rare. Okay. okay. Then uh, Mr. Gerald, uh, is two questions. Uh, firstly is uh, how does light term a product like light term uh, achieve four hour fire rating? Okay. Uh, in, in general is if you use light term to make into like precast panel, which we have a product called V panel, okay, we managed to achieve two hour fire rating based on 100 mm thick and we are doing another test in Siri Malaysia in another two weeks, okay, it will be able to achieve up to four hours fire rating. Basically, it depends on the density of the panel. It doesn't depend on the raw material. To put everything in very easy to understand, if you have some a panel that is 900 kg per meter cube, okay, and 100 mm, you can achieve four hour fire rating. Uh, any water absorption requirement when using an area with direct exposure to weather, moisture. Um, if that's the case, because it's porous, so you definitely need a waterproofing layer over the exposed uh, surface. Yep. Okay, from Mr. Simon, yep. Uh, from Hansen's question. Okay, if lighter foam melted by solvent penetration, so uh, does it become void uh, structurally uh, for roof slab, water leak, and so on? I think this one is relating to the earlier question on uh, solvents like xylene. Uh, okay. Um, 
uh, Mr. Simon, I believe you mentioned is uh, you want to use as a as a as an insulation screen on the roof, right? If the answer is yes, very likely that bottom will already have a waterproofing layer. So whether there is solvent or not, irregardless of the presence of solvent, uh, lightweight material water will seep through and it will be tanked on the waterproofing layer. La. So uh, if a good spec of waterproofing has been used and it's been done well, uh, they will not have any such uh, seepage problem. Uh, if it does, it's correlated to the waterproofing, not so much on the screening layer. La. Right, then uh, we have a final question uh, also Mr. Simon. So, uh, uh, whether there's any crack tolerance, right? If uh, you say as finishing, if it's used as a finishing, right, on the roof. Okay, so if it's used as a finishing, I believe you want to use it as an insulation layer. So, probably your build up will be what RC slab, waterproofing, and then our lightweight screen. Okay, so then maybe you have a topping screening to protect it. So, we will recommend, yes, the concern is uh, valid. Okay, we will recommend at the screening layer, you put in expansion joint at every two to three meter run to put in an expansion joint so that when the weather is hot, the screening layer will be able to expand and contract. All right. Uh, all right, so that, that is our last question from the chat. Um, we still have a bit of time. So at this point, um, does anyone else have any questions? You can also uh, use your uh, audio to, to ask. So uh, any more questions? If not, then uh, we assume there are no more questions. Okay. All right. So once again, uh, yeah, thank you everyone for registering and logging in and to attend this uh, technical talk. Uh, of course, you know, it's, it's not uh, the end after at the end of this session, right? We, you know how to contact us if you have specific projects, uh, you want to find out more on the applications and so on. Uh, yep, just uh, give us an email, a call, WhatsApp. Okay. I think uh, different uh, applications uh, can be a bit different, right? But uh, we'll work closely with you, all right? So, uh, okay. So I think there's no more questions. So at this point, uh, probably I'll bring this session to an end. Maybe Wang, anything before we conclude? Uh, okay, I think there's a, one new question just came in. Whether it complies to BN, right? 45545. Okay, uh, Mr. Paul, uh, I'm really sorry, but this uh, building code, the British standard doesn't sound, uh, I, I'm not too familiar with this. Can, can I get back to you uh, after this? Okay, so lastly, before we conclude, uh, yeah, we will be sending out uh, all these materials to you. And uh, yeah, maybe give us one or two days because even uh, after this session, right, uh, because you know, many good questions here. So we'll probably want to uh, incorporate some of them and put it into the brochure as well. Right, to answer your questions uh, as, uh, when you receive our materials. Okay. Um, yeah. mm. Martin, I think we have another question from Mr. Brian. I will just answer this quickly. Ah. Uh, Brian, yes. same principle, okay. uh, what is the most economic way to ship your product to Sabah? Okay, same principle to uh, how we do it in Korea, UK, all this. Uh, we highly not recommend to ship it there. Uh, one way is that we can do a small manufacturing over there but uh, depends on uh, the, the, the volume of the job. So by doing that, we can really reduce the selling price of the product because there is no shipping uh, cost involved. Now. Yeah, so maybe uh, later we can discuss about this. So, uh, yep, okay. So finally, uh, yeah, I think uh, besides lightweight aggregate, we also have uh, lightweight uh, panels. All right, we manufacture our own uh, ALC panels also and a, uh, AAC blocks as well, right? These are all from our own factory. So uh, you have any uh, queries on these other products, uh, yeah, also can uh, check with me, all right? I'll be happy to send you all the information. Okay, so, uh, okay, it's exactly 3 p.m. now. So I think at this point, uh, yeah, I will uh, conclude the, the session. And once again, thank you very much okay, and uh, hope to hear from you soon. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Okay,